Damien Pyro here, and I just want to say that I am not a voice actor. I don't have access to good AI voices at the moment, but I will do my best to differentiate the voices in my audio series. All scripts are written and read by me, sounds recorded from various sources, and the music is made on MuseScore Studio by me currently with advice from family and friends, or classical music that's taken in the laws of free domain. All images are made by AI, and all text on the screen has been typed by me. Any and all sounds, locations, and characters that may reflect real life are purely coincidental or purposely parodied. Please enjoy and support the official release. Damien Pyro here, and I would like to take you on a journey into my mind as I pluck out one of the many stories. This one being The Shadow of Umbra City. Episode 1. Act 1. Shadows in the Night. It's nighttime in Umbra City, as we take you to the police station, a dimly lit, bustling hub of activity. The police chief, John D. Harkin, whom is just known as Police Chief Harkin, a stout man in his late fifties with a large, muscular build, a fat belly, and a rough-sounding American accent. He walks into the office of James Winters, a sharp-looking detective in his late twenties, with an Americanized Cockney accent. Due to his parents moving here when he was just a teenager, he has jet black hair, dressed in black slacks, a red button-up shirt, with a leather set of suspender straps. His gun holster is attached to the straps with a Colt 1911 pistol commander model held inside. And to his left, he had a black trench coat and a K-19 soft body armor on a chair for quick access. Harkin slapped a stack of papers on James' desks. Winners, I've got another weird one for you. Looks like an animal attack, but well, there's something strange, you'll see. It's possibly connected to these other cases. I want you to go in and investigate. Compare notes with these and get back to me with what you find. We've had a lot of weird reports and weather lately, even for us, as well as reports of shadow people and monsters, so just be careful, even though it's probably just a bunch of drugged out wackos. James looks at the paperwork and he sighs. Oh joy, another chance to prove me skills, eh? And what, but the case is too bleeding tricky for the others, isn't it, Chief? <laughs> You're the best detective I've ever seen, Winners, but I doubt even you can figure this out. Now, go, get to work. The latest victim is in the alley behind Umber Tech Heaven, a gaming cafe on Fifth and May. It was just called in. Oh great, a gaming cafe. A regular old denizen, that one. Ain't it? <laughs> Can't wait to see what kind of scum we've got crawling around the woodwork. How'd you get the papers to get up so fast, eh, Chief? <laughs> Just get to work, winners. James grabs his vest and his coat. Then he exits the station and gets in his car. After a few minutes drive, he arrives at the crime scene. A dark alleyway with neon signs reflecting off the wet pavement. He notices a young woman dressed in a waitress apron with the cafe's theme and logo all over it, as well as pins he recognized from a popular video game and animation series. Containment monsters. She even had a couple of his favorites, and a few newer ones, like a blue duck monster and a grass tiger. She was leaving the scene with a look of worry, and her boss was yelling out at her, be careful! Who knows what's out there? As she left, she's a petite woman in her early 20s with fiery red hair, piercing green eyes, and a slight smattering of freckles across her cheeks. She was adorned in a black leather corset and a skirt with fishnet stockings under the apron, a name tag reading Luna Glutens on her chest. 
He was a bit distracted and accidentally walks into her as she's leaving. Oh, blast. Bumped into you, love. She turns startled. She too wasn't paying attention. Oh my. I'm so sorry, sir. I didn't notice you there. Calm down. No worries, love. Oh, fine, innit? It was my fault as well for not paying attention, right? Luna exits quickly and James watches her go for a brief moment before turning to David Esquire, the owner of Umbertech Heaven, a middle-aged man with a nervous expression. He is quite shaken up, it seemed. Hey, mate. I need you to try and calm down, so. Mr. Esquire, what happened here? I, I, I heard a strange noise and gr growling sounds. And then suddenly a scream. It was loud at first, but then it quickly became rough and muffled. Like someone was trying to scream while being strangled. I called the cops, but... Uh, I was too late. I, uh, I, well, it, it may have just been my panicked imagination playing tricks on me, but I swear, I also heard a strange sound, like someone snapping a whip over and over. It went crack, crack, crack. It sounded like it was echoing through the alley. It, it was terrifying. When I finally gathered the courage to look, all I saw was the body. It was laying in the alley. Hmm. <clears throat> Growling sound, eh? And you didn't see anything unusual? Not a tall bloke with a gun? A dog and a whip? Nothing of the sort? N no, nothing. I swear, sir. Just the growling and the screams. I, I, I didn't see anything. I, by the time I looked, I'm... I made a call while I was getting my employees to safety. Wasn't taking any chances after what I j just heard, but then after I saw the body, I, I kept them in the back until the police arrived, and I knew that, that they were safe. All right, all right, Nick, calm down. I'm gonna go have a look. James heads outside, and he examines the body. A gruesome scene. He noticed a huge puddle of blood strangle wounds, and a severed leg. It had been chewed on a bit, and he noticed a trail with a bloody set of paw prints streaking from it, and led up a wall before vanishing. The victim was a woman with an Umber Tech Gardens badge reading Vicky Orban, Bioengineering. Boy me, this is getting interesting. Bit of leg clean off and strangulation wounds? What sort of animal does that, hmm? Vicky Orvin, eh? And she just so happens to work with another Umbatech facility. Really? And well... Dang, ain't this just bloody fantastic? Paw prints, dusting up in the air. I need to get back to the station, see if I can find anything similar. He thinks this to himself as he snaps a few photos of the scene before asking the other officers what info they have and getting in his car and driving back to the station. And with that, we conclude Act 1 of Episode 1, Shadows in the Night. I hope you enjoyed, 